Welcome to the Bravo Papers, a safe space for all us Bravo fans who love to analyze, deconstruct, and talk about our favorite Bravo shows ad nauseum. There's no such thing as overanalyzing or reading too much into your favorite Bravo shows and Bravo liberties here. So join me, Bravo and Botox, as I find the depth amongst the shallow. Okay, everyone, let's get into it right away because there is a lot and I'm already a day late. Um, so first of all, sorry about the late episode. It's, you know, it's the same thing as usual. My same sorry, sad excuse that you're all tired of hearing, which is that I'm spreading myself too thin and I'm not good at this. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying. All right. So one thing I do want to say before we get into the news is, number one, if my sound is not as good this week... I apologize. I did a little test run because normally I pathetically sit in a little walk-in closet and record because, you know, there's clothes everywhere, you know, there's, they absorb the sound, it's supposed to be better, but I didn't want to do that today because I got to like move my desk into the closet and it's a pain in the ass and etc. So I didn't do that. So I'm just sitting in a room like a normal person and you know i tried a couple effects on my software here and we're gonna see how that works for noise reduction and for making it sound good so i hope it sounds good in advance i guess you'll be listening right now and you can make a judgment um now the other thing that i wanted to say is that i know i haven't released a deep dive episode in a bit since i released the part two summer house but What I need to do for my own mental health, for my own sanity, is go down to one a month. Because here's the thing with the deep dives, is I have to re-watch usually a whole series. Um, And if not a whole series, I'm watching a few seasons. And then I also will do some searching online. I'll check out stuff on Reddit, on, you know social media in general, Um, or I might be doing something like I am currently doing for the deep dive for August that I'm working on, which is reading a whole book. So I will not be doing the deep dive ones as often, but I'll still be doing these weekly episodes. So every week I'll still do the Bravo breaking news. I don't know, I might rename it. I was thinking like Bravo weekly news or something like that. Because, you know, it's not really breaking news, which I knew that going in. I just liked the double B sound. If you have any suggestions of a good thing that I could call the weekly pod, I am open to it. And the other thing I wanted to say was that, you know, I want the deep dives to be really good quality rather than quantity. So like my first one, the Raquel one, that was my most popular one, my most downloaded one. It was also the one that I took the most time on because I hadn't launched the podcast, so I could just take my time doing it. And I think I probably spent like a couple months, maybe even three, you know, taking my time to like watch it, look up stuff online Um, you know, read like some interviews with her, listen to a couple podcast episodes, like that stuff takes time. Like I have a full time job in real life. So it's not like I like this is my job all day and I can just do this. I can't. Um, I can maybe watch like an hour or two of TV a night. And that's if I'm lucky. And if I'm like really not busy that night. Um, And you know, if my daughter's occupying herself or whatever the case is. And on top of that, usually there is some live show to watch and I got to do Twitter roundups. So, and I know nobody wants those to go away. So yeah. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I am right now reading. So just a little tease for August's episode, because a few people have requested this topic, especially with what is happening with Kyle and Mauricio. I am currently reading House of Hilton a sort of 
unauthorized autobiography or biography, sorry, of the Hilton family with a lot about Kathy and Big Kathy and Little Kathy. Little Kathy being Kathy Hilton. Big Kathy being their mom. Um, It was hard to get my hands on a copy. I have to be honest. I trying to track down a copy of this book really made me feel like Kathy Hilton has done her best to bury it. (laughs) Now, that being said, there is some interesting information. I'm only a couple chapters in. But, you know, that with a combination of some rewatching, and I really want to do a deep dive into those Richard sisters because, my God, the Richard sisters drama is just the best. I mean, maybe bad for them, good for us, you know, whatever you want to say. So that's what's coming. So patience, my friends, because it will be worth it. And you don't have to track down the book and pay like $50 for it like I did. (laughs) Because I'm going to read it and tell you all the juicy stuff. So let's start, though, because there is some juicy stuff happening right now. This week has been like, whew, busy. First thing I want to say is Potomac. Because how can I not? So, wow. There was a a brawl um, with, involving friends of the Real Housewives of Potomac. I want to make it clear that it's friends, okay? Because the Potomac Housewives were not actually fighting or involved in any sort of physical altercation. And I kind of feel bad that, like, some people, some people, not everyone, are sort of attaching this reputation to them because... You know, they've had violence on the show before with the whole thing with Monique. So I don't want people to be like, oh, look at what happens on Potomac. Like, no, that's not really accurate. These are two girls who are, yes, they're friends of the cast, but they're thirsty, right? They're thirsty AF to get on the show. And I really think that has a lot to do with it. Like they were trying to, you know, cause ruckus so that they could get on the show I don't think if they weren't there or in this picture, do I think this cast would have erupted into this? What happened this night? No, I really don't. Um, Yes, they might throw a drink, which that happens on every franchise, or they might throw a piece of lettuce or whatever. But I don't think that it would have turned into what it turned into if it wasn't for, you know, these kind of thirsty friends of. So let me just kind of break down what happened for those of you who have either not seen the video or if you've seen the video and you just don't know what the hell you're looking at because there's so much going on, it happens really quickly. So, I mean, I've watched the video a million times, but it is, it's hard to make out and because there's a lot happening. Like I said, it happens fast. But after watching it and then reading the comments of other people who've watched it and like slow mode it and all that stuff, I think I've got it. So basically what happens is Deb, Deborah, she is, if you remember from last year, she is one of Ashley Darby's friends. She's the one who Candace says looked like a Muppet and she's the one who kind of claimed Chris was hitting on her. So it sort of got her on the show. It got her, I mean, it did. It got her a little bit of attention. You know, the the editors, the producers sort of made her look like a fool by playing back the footage where Chris is clearly showing zero interest in her. And that was about it. She didn't end up at the reunion. And I bet you she was pissed about that, in my opinion. You know, Candace, we all saw Candace, like, pay her dust at that party where Candace was like, where she was like, can we talk? And Candace was like, no, (laughs) ma'am, which I loved. Um, So basically what happens is that I'm sure Deborah was trying to sing this tune again with Candace, with Chris or whatever. Who knows? Who knows what the new level of drama is? But clearly Deborah is here to start shit. So. It starts with she throws a drink on Candace, which if you watch the video really quickly or you just kind of watch it like not super carefully, it's it's easy to miss it. But that is what starts everything. Candace is dancing, minding her business. Her back is to Deborah. It's not like she's like 
yelling in Deborah's face and she's in the middle of insult. Like, no, that's not going on. OK, because I am not going to stand for people trying to blame this all on Candace. You don't have to like Candace. You don't have to be a Candace fan. You can dislike her. She can be your least favorite housewife. But I am going with what is happening in the video and the facts of the video. Full stop. Okay. So Deborah throws a drink on Candace. And then Kiana intercepts it. Kiana is another friend. I think she's a friend of Candace. So she kind of like intercepts it and she... Like, she doesn't actually intercept the drink, but she sees the drink get thrown. So she kind of intercepts maybe trying to stop Deborah from, I don't know, doing anything else, right? And basically, she pushes Deborah. Deborah clocks Kiana in the forehead with something, like a cup or I don't know, a glass, I'm not sure. And then the chaos kind of ensues from there. Now, one thing to add to that, actually, is that Kiana does put her... She, oh, yeah, sorry. She put her hands in Deborah's face to stop her. And then Deborah clocked her with something. Okay? And then that's when Kiana really, like, kind of goes to town on Deborah. Like, Deborah was kind of trying to act like she won the fight, but... I no, sorry. Then, the, the, <laughs> then TMZ released the footage and we saw what really happened. So... The other thing that I want to add is that after the drink gets thrown, Candace turns around and is like, what the hell just happened? And there's like a, it looks like it's an empty champagne bottle or something on the table. And she throws it up, she picks it up and kind of puts it over her shoulder as though she's going to throw it. But I mean, it is, it's clear to me, in my opinion, this is my opinion, that she was never going to throw it. Because the way she holds it is so, like, lackluster and, like, it doesn't even really look like she's charging up. It just looks like she got hit with something, liquid, drink, whatever, and was like, oh, my God, who did that? And was, like, just picked it up to sort of, like, don't throw anything else at me or I'm going to hit you with this, like, as a defense mechanism. I don't think she was ever actually intending on using it. And most importantly, she didn't use it. Now... Somebody, I think it was Ashley, kind of like dives in to be like, Candace, don't throw the bottle, but, or like to kind of stop. Maybe it was Giselle. It was somebody. It was one of the the Potomac housewives. But I still think even if that didn't happen, I don't think Candace was actually going to throw it. Do I know 100%? Can I read her mind? Blah, blah, blah. No. So anyways, let's just deal. So no one will ever know 100% what the intention was. So all we can judge is what did happen, um, which is that she did not throw it. So I'll give her that, okay? Now, the girl in the yellow is some other friend in the group who was pictured. A lot of people thought it was Giselle because she kind of has like a similar hair as Giselle. Um, and it's, it's blurry. You can't really see. But she was pulling Kiana's hair from the back. And... She ends up, like, taking the entire group down. So I guess she was pulling Kiana's hair to try and get her off of Deborah because, like, Deborah was getting, like, the snot beaten out of her. Um, and I'm just trying to think. So, I, so when she pulls her hair, they all come tumbling down. Like, it's, like, a big pile of people of these, like, friends. Um, so... Who is to blame for the altercation if we have to, I mean, you can argue everyone who was involved in the physicality of it, but who, you know, if we're going to go back to grade school, who started it? Uh, Deborah started it. (laughs) She started it. She threw the drink. And then, and then I've seen other people say, if you look closely, you can see she threw like a, a napkin or something, which maybe hit Kiana in the face. And then that's when the girl in yellow jumps in, pulling Kiana to the ground as well. So it's kind of like both Deborah and both Deborah and the girl in yellow, whose name I can't remember, but I could look up, sorry, are friends of Ashley. So a lot of people are like, this is Ashley's fault. Get Ashley off the show. She's causing too much trouble, etc. We'll get into that. Anyways, um, 
so yeah, pretty wild. But I mean, really, technically, Deborah did start it. So I don't know what she's thinking. Cameras were not filming. So cameras were down. Okay, now from what I've heard, they were filming earlier and then cameras went down. Now, this was all caught on cell phone video, which, of course, TMZ paid for. And and there was at first the story came out and it was like, oh, Deborah, like kick this girl's ass and blah, blah, blah. And everybody was talking. And then when the video came out, people were like, oh, OK, Deborah's a liar. Um, and then Deborah posted this like really cringe Instagram post where she's like showing herself with her ponytail, like all like nice and intact. And she has a nail, like a fake nail or whatever in her hand kind of saying like oh you know Kiara or or maybe the other girl who was pulling her hair the girl in yellow are no because the girl in yellow is friends with Ashley too okay never mind sorry there are too many people who I am not familiar with involved okay which is why I can only care about this to a point but anyways (laughs) because it's not the actual housewives right so I'm not like I don't think this is that maybe as big of a deal as some people are making it because it's not, you know, filming was done and it's not like the cast that was doing this. It was their friends. The cast is not, they are somewhat responsible for their friends in the sense that they're responsible for their friends that they bring around. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't control what a grown adult does. However, on the other side, you know, I guess you could say, okay, Ashley knows how thirsty this girl is and she keeps bringing her around to antagonize Candace. So I can see that. Um, Anyway, so Deborah showed this like Instagram video or picture with her holding onto the nail like, oh, you tried, but your nail broke off in my hair because my hair is so strong or something like that. So anyways, it's it's just like they are doing the most before, during, after the absolute most. And it's kind of embarrassing, I have to be honest. Now, I'm having some, you know, flashbacks to the Monique versus Candace time in the Potomac world, which is kind of a time that none of us like to relive in the Bravo world because it was like one of the most contentious, divisive conflicts in Housewives history. Like, people were either Team Candace or Team Monique. It was also one of those things that launched the Potomac show. The Potomac show was already doing really well, but it kind of opened it up to a wider audience because people kind of heard about this. And they're, you know, say what you want. I've seen a lot of people being like, oh, yeah, I started watching the season where Monique and Candace got into a fight. As much as Bravo wants to be like, we don't condone violence, at the end of the day, it did bring in more viewers. So... I don't know if these girls thought that this was going to get them a place on the show, if it was going to secure them a spot. I don't know. I really don't know because they weren't even filming. But it's it's giving desperate. I hope that they do not, you know... How do I say this? I hope that they do not give these girls the attention that they're looking for. And I hope that we never see them on the show again, because like, I don't think that that's what Potomac is about. I think we all are over that whole fight thing from that, that old season. We did that. It was super divisive. It wasn't fun. It wasn't cool. I don't want to argue with people again. And this is bringing up all the old toxic stuff, right? Like all the people coming out with like the, you know, blaming Candace, you know, she deserved what she got because she was a loud mouth or trying to like, you know, rewrite history with how that fight happened. And, you know, and now we have people be like, oh, she picked up a champagne bottle. So she's just as bad as Monique. Like, it's just like, oh, we don't want to go down that road again. At least I don't. So I hope that this happened off camera. And that it'll stay off camera. That's what I hope. Okay. We will see what else goes on. But one thing, actually one last thing I want to say is that they did wrap filming on Potomac. um, I think it was like this weekend. And the wrap of filming happened, yes, after the fight. And... 
I, I'm not sure. I'm going to assume that maybe the fight was spoken about there. But yeah, we'll see what happens from there. So they did have one more day of filming after that. There was like a finale party like they usually do. I'm going to assume that those friends were not present. <laughs> but you never know. Okay, so let's talk about Beverly Hills because Kyle and Mauricio are really annoying me. So I need to get it off my chest. So, you know, they're all being, you know, they're all over Instagram being annoying. Um, I'll give you a couple examples here, but, and I'll tell you why I think it's annoying. So they're sort of doing this thing like, I don't know. I feel like they're gaslighting us. That's what's bothering me. It's like, clearly something is going on in your marriage. Clearly things are messed up. Clearly the Bravo fandom has done a good job at figuring out all of this with the clues, with, you know, Kyle and this woman, et cetera, et cetera. And then people, a very reliable source, release that they're separating. And now they're kind of trying to act like all of a sudden everything's fine and we're just a bunch of like losers who overanalyze. Like Kyle is, she's gaslighting. It's very annoying. So there, you know, there was a post of like, First of all, I talked about this last episode, but there's all these posts of like Kyle and Mauricio, you know, doing this like happy couple thing and Aspen and whatever. But now, you know, Mauricio posted a picture of himself working out and he's all like, you know, showing off his muscles. And then Kyle comments and she's like, must be Ozembic with like a laughing face and a tongue out emoji. And then he replies with like three laughing face emojis and he's like, must be, ha ha ha. Like, it's just obnoxious behavior. It's like they're, they want attention so badly, but they only want the attention that they want. And they only want the attention that's like, you guys are all idiots. Look at us. We're still having fun. And we're laughing at the expense of all the rest of you. Like, okay, good for you, Kyle. Anyways, so there's that. And then there's like, you know, somebody put a comment on Kyle's family picture saying like, we love damage control, Kyle. And then she's like, if y'all, which I don't know, I don't think I've ever heard Kyle say y'all. But anyways, maybe that's like her new country music thing. If y'all like to read into every little crumb, read into this. And then it's an emoji giving the middle finger. Like, Kyle, you did this to yourself. You shouldn't have left such obvious breadcrumbs on Instagram. And yeah, it's your own fault. Sorry. And also stop being on a reality show if it bothers you so much. And if you don't want to share what's actually happening in your life. So I stand by that. Um, then there was an, uh, an interview with Erica Jane, who on the same topic said that she will not say anything about Kyle and Mo because... You know, when, when the whole thing was happening with her and her drama, people were, some people were commenting on it and they, you know, they were wrong and they didn't know what they were talking about and she doesn't want to put things out there that aren't true and yada, yada, yada. So as usual, we have Erica Jane, you know, sticking with the Fox Force 5 deal where they don't say anything. So what else is new? So that kind of goes along with my prediction from last week, which was that we're not going to hear much about this on the season in the future or the one that's already been filmed. However, a pleasant surprise, and I'm down with being wrong, guys, okay? Especially about stuff like this. Garcelle was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy, and she said, and he said, is this going to be spoken about on the, you know, the newest season that's coming up? And Garcelle said, oh, yeah. Because Sutton and I had suspicions. Thank you, Garcelle and Sutton, for actually doing your job. From me and all the other Beverly Hills fans out there, we thank you. Because if it wasn't for those two, I guarantee you no one would be asking questions unless Kyle brought it up. And the silliest thing I've seen is people trying to say that Rinna would have brought it up. 
like people on social media, I already went into this last week, but people are like, this is why we need Rena. Like, what? Have you watched the last like seven seasons of this show? Anyways, I, I can't go through that again. So re-listen to last week if you want to know my thoughts on that or listen to it if you didn't. And Garcelle and Sutton have been the ones kind of pushing the narratives, pushing the boundaries, asking the difficult, awkward questions that none of the Fox Force 5 want to answer. And they are what has really brought this show into its new era. I have to be honest, I really think that. And, you know, I understand that Garcelle, on a, on the surface level to people, she might not come off as, like, she's not as much of a caricature as some of the other ones. You know, Dorit is like a caricature of herself. She's like, oh, I speak four languages and I have this business and now I have that business and I have a fake accent and me and my husband always seem like we're up to some shady stuff financially. And like, she's a character. She's just odd. Like, she's someone who if you met them, you'd be like, okay, like, who is this girl? Is she like a real person? Lisa Rinna too. She's like, you know, stripping down and dancing. She's like just being like wild and crazy. Her lips and all that. Like she's just larger than life. And Erica too. Erica's like, Erica's like a villain from a James Bond movie. Like she's just like, hey guys. Like, I don't, you know, and she's, they're always with the crazy outfits and the getups and the like all, you know, so they are like these caricatures. Whereas Garcelle is seemingly pretty normal. And I don't mean that as an insult. <laughs> but so that's why there are people out there that are like, Garcelle's boring. What does she even bring to the show? Where's her one liners? Da, da, da. Okay, she may not be, you know, like this larger than like caricature who's always doling out one liners and, and, you know, who has like really good shade constantly. And no, her confessionals, are they the most exciting confessionals? No. However, she plays an important role in the ensemble. You need someone like her, okay? She helps to keep Sutton a little more leveled because Sutton's a little kooky. And she asks the tough questions and she's not scared to ask them. And she doesn't care about following the rules of the clique. And she doesn't curate everything to come off a certain way. Sutton is also good because Sutton will push even further than Garcelle because Sutton has a little bit less self-awareness. Okay, Garcelle is still pretty self-aware. She's an actress. She knows the business, all that. Sutton is less self-aware and she can get really messy and, you know, she can all of a sudden be crying and massaging her face with that thing. Like Sutton is, you know, and she's just like this awkward little odd lady um, but she's, and like, she's funny, but she doesn't mean to be funny, you know? Um, but she also has her head on a little bit better than, you know, some of the Fox Force 5 ladies. So that's why, to me, they are such an integral part of this ensemble cast. And that's what Beverly Hills has been missing for a long time. A really good ensemble. They are, you know, all these housewife shows, none of them are good when only one or two people are good, you need an ensemble cast. And we saw that with like Summer House Martha's Vineyard. That cast came in like a whirlwind. And yeah, people may hate a few specific characters, but I actually wouldn't want to get rid of any of them because they all together are the little cogs in the machine that make it all work beautifully. Right? Now, do I think every cog in Beverly Hills is needed? No, not necessarily. I actually think you could take out maybe a cog uh, and it would still work pretty well. But I wouldn't take out Garcelle and Sutton. I would take out Dorit. Or, yeah, I would probably take out Dorit. Erica, I'm not a big Erica fan, obviously. I'm not a fan at all. And I never was, even before the whole you know, super villain thing. However, she's leaning into the villain thing, which I have found entertaining. And I thought she really leaned into it last season and it worked for her. Have you ever gotten so sucked into a show that you just can't stop thinking about it? I'm writer Amy Archer and I created my podcast, Little Miss Recap, for people just like you and me. On Little Miss Recap, 
We cover shows like Yellowstone, Yellow Jackets, and HBO's Love and Death. But we also do some documentaries like Shiny Happy People and The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. If you're looking for a podcast that overanalyzes things but also has fun, give Little Miss Recap a try. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. One other thing that Garcelle talked about that I do want to mention is she talked about the bot attack. So she discussed how, you know, the investigation was ongoing, that they came really close and Andy, but I guess didn't have like a final result. But Andy asked basically, who do you think it was? And, and I think, and Garcelle said something along the lines, this was on Watch What Happens Live. She said something along the lines of like, I, I did accuse Diana. And she said that apparently on the reunion, she accused other cast members, but it wasn't shown, which I thought was very interesting. And we all know who those cast members are, Erica and Rena, Obvi. And, you know, ugh, that's hard to stomach. Even though we kind of know it's, yeah. It's hard to stomach. So Diana and Rinna, of course, because they can never keep their big mouth shut, had to pipe up. So Diana posts this on her Instagram, a basically like a reply from her lawyer to Garcelle saying that saying that basically if Garcelle could just like participate in Diana's investigation, then they really would be able to find out who did this and, you know, unwrap the truth once and for all. Um, And that, you know, the court has denied their request for additional discovery to identify the wrongdoers. And we'd be able, we believe we would be able to get this additional discovery if Ms. Bouveau would join the lawsuit. Accordingly, we ask if Ms. Bouveau would be willing to join the lawsuit if Ms. Bouveau did so. Or is it Beauvais? It's Beauvais, isn't it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Miss Jenkins would cover all expenses. So annoying that she puts that in there. You know she told her lawyer to put that in there. She always has to take a dig, right? That little passive aggressive, like, yeah, Garcelle, we know like you don't have as much money as me and you can't really afford it, but don't worry, I'll help you out. Like, she, Garcelle's doing fine, Diana. Okay? Anyways. I... One gajillion percent understand why Garcelle would not want to participate and cooperate with Diana and her lawyer. Why do you want to cooperate with the person who you think did it? And the person who seems like they're out to get you. You can't trust them. I don't trust them or their lawyer. Okay, so for the people who were trying to criticize her for that, like, come on, open your eyes a little bit. Anyways, then Rena. God. She has to go on and comment. Now seems like it's a good time to release the name of the person who did it. I think it's time. Like, no one asked you, Rinna. Anyways, these two, like Diane and Rinna, they just keep making themselves look more guilty and guilty, I swear to God. It's like, it's like they're trying to call everyone's bluff or like they're trying to call Garcelle's bluff, like, Look, if we'd done it, we wouldn't be participating. If we did it, I wouldn't be calling for you to release the names. Like, ugh. anyways, they are very annoying. So on another topic, okay. So what will come as a shock to maybe no one is that Dorit and PK are in some trouble with their insurance company. So pretty much what happened was Dorit and PK claim that they left the water running at their house by accident and that, you know, they want the insurance company to pay up for it because it caused a flood. I mean, it's looking a little sus at this point, you know, listen, when we heard about the breakery, la- uh, breakery, wow, sorry, I'm really tired. When we heard about the break-in robbery, I think that's what I was going for. When we heard about that last year, I, when I first heard about it, I immediately felt, you know, fear and pity and all that for her. And I felt really bad. 
you know, and then when I started reading more and more about some of the shadiness and, you know, Dorit and PK's kind of sordid past when it comes to finances and him, you know, paying back a casino that he owed money like the next day or whatever. Anyways, I, I'm not going to lie. I got a little bit skeptical. Um, and then when I watched her and how devastated she was and how upset she was, I started to lean back the other way again. And I thought, okay, maybe this is real. Um, and then I thought, maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle, because that's usually what it is. And I thought, okay, maybe Dorit thought it was real. And maybe PK set it up to, you know, have this happen so he could pay off his gambling debt. And maybe, you know, Dorit and the kids were su not supposed to be there. They got the date wrong. I don't know. I I got that impression a little bit. Anyways, I don't know. So again, I don't want to think that anyone would do that. But if watching Housewives and reality TV has taught me anything, it's that you can't put anything past anybody. And now with this, it's like, come on. Now, I mean, it doesn't help their credibility and believability. It just doesn't. Because it's like, who leaves the water running on enough to flood an entire house? I mean, I'm sure it's happened in the history of people owning houses. You'd have to have a plug in, I guess, or a clogged pipe or something so that it fills up. Or maybe if you do leave it on long enough, it floods. I don't know. What the hell do I know? Anyways, but it seems odd. That's all I'm going to say. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um... Let's move on to Vanderpump Rules, everyone's favorite topic. First of all, congratulations to Vanderpump Rules on being nominated for an Emmy, which is really exciting. And in a way, I feel like I'm nominated for an Emmy because, you know, myself and the other Bravo content creators, we worked really hard during Scandaval, okay? Like, I got carpal tunnel, from posting memes and sharing and making highlights and like it took over my life honestly um i am you know of course joking around but somewhat maybe a little serious um but they are filming their new season which we are all very excited for and there's a little intel leaking from filming so there's been you know some people as always, around who see things happening during filming and who catch it on their cell phones or there's pictures or whatever. Anyway, so one thing that has been leaked is about Tom Sandoval and Lisa Vanderpump. So I'll read you the Dumois um, post. So, or the blind that was sent into Dumois. So it says, sir, and I guess, uh, Sa so I guess they kind of cut the beginning of the sentence off, but it starts with sir. So maybe it's like filming at Sir, who knows? But it says, I guess Sandoval and Lisa had to be separated by security the other night and they were screaming at each other. He was screaming expletives and she called him a liar and manipulator and they made cameras go down while security intervened. Now, do I believe this? Yeah, because, you know, Sandoval loves yelling at women. So I could see that. I could also see LVP maybe going for a little bit of image rehab because people were not loving her during the reunion because people felt like she defended him too much. So I could see her coming at him hard in an attempt to kind of revamp and kind of show everyone, you know, I don't worry, I'm going to hold him his feet to the fire like you all wanted, right? Or I'm not letting him get off easy like everyone said. So there were also pictures. I could see that anyway. So maybe that's, and you, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter who it is because anyone going against Sandoval, he freaks out. He can't handle people telling him he's wrong or not agreeing with him. Like he really can't. So even if it's LVP, I totally believe he would yell at her. And we've pretty much seen him do that. Um, so, sorry, I'm all over the place. But Sheena and Sandoval also had a heated conversation during filming. So there were some pictures leaked and you can tell she's kind of like standing up and getting mad. Um, I mean, we can all kind of guess what that's probably about. 
He was asked by paparazzi and I think it was TMZ if he knows how Raquel is doing, says he doesn't know. Uh, apparently Raquel is out of rehab with a $200,000 bill. <laughs> so I guess, you know, if this rehab thing is true or whatever, she's racked up a huge bill, still working on negotiations with Bravo. But from what I'm hearing, that's probably settled and she is filming. So allegedly they were headed to Lake Tahoe to film and Raquel was going to be there is the last that I heard. Um, the other thing is that she has, you know, reclaimed her name and is now going by Rachel and says that, you know, she's taking the power away from other people, which she may not have wanted to do a press release of that because now everyone's going to start calling her Raquel again. Or they'll just think of some other name. <laughs> so... So I don't know. Anyways, so I'll call her Raquel for now. We'll see what happens. So there's that. She's allegedly filming. The other thing is that apparently Tom and Ariana were both present filming at Sir at the same time, which is, I mean, we knew this was going to happen. We knew that they would have to film together at some point, even if they're not interacting. But it's just hard to imagine like, it's really hard to imagine them in the same space in any way. So, I mean, I'm very curious to see what it's like. And yeah, it's, it's going to be wild. I mean, I could see like other people speaking to him on behalf of Ariana. I can see maybe, you know, they're just in the same space. They don't acknowledge each other, like that kind of thing. What I really can't imagine is, like, if he was, like, coupley with Raquel and Ariana being around, you know, that, yeah, I, I don't think I could imagine that. But it doesn't seem like Raquel and Sandoval are going to be an item, so maybe there is a chance for the group to, I don't know, coexist? Like, I don't even know. Um, so I guess we're going to see what happens. Um, the last thing I want to talk about today is the new... Roni. So, okay, listen, I'm going to be the first to admit that I was not excited about this because, you know, I loved my original Roni and I was kind of sad that, you know, they threw the whole thing in the garbage because of you know, Ramona's antics or, you know, whatever, and that they didn't give us the reunion. They didn't do it right. Like they, they screwed it up royally. Right. So, you know, I was a little bit like, Meh. the other thing that I didn't like was I felt like there was too many influencers on the cast because influencers are very careful about their image. And to me, people who are very, very careful about their image are not good reality stars people who are too curated they're usually like trying to sell a certain image and etc now the one kind of caveat to that is that when it comes to housewives they know if they don't bring it they're gonna be fired or they won't last so there's that this cast also had the added pressure of living up to you know the expectations which were high quite frankly and I think it's okay that we all had high expectations that we were skeptical because if we weren't and we were just like great a new roni yay open arms then you know what incentive is there for bravo and the producers and the cast to really put the work in to make it good and they did so you know I need to kind of rewatch the premiere because I was kind of having to do something else while I was watching it. Um, but I do did just want to talk about the premiere party because apparently uh, Jessel, Jessel Tank threw up at the party. Now, a lot of people were kind of trying to make this out like she was sick from drinking too much, which that's what I thought too originally. Um, and I didn't think that was a bad thing. I just thought, hey, it sounds like, you know, she had a good night. Like, it was fun. I was like, that's kind of like, I don't know. I'm okay with that, that being something a housewife does. 
sometimes we all party too hard. Who knows, right? Like, I wasn't judging her for that. But apparently she was actually sick. So I've heard that she was ill with some kind of stomach bug. Again, I don't know what's true and what's not. I don't really think it matters that much. But I do think that it kind of I think if anything, it was a good thing for the premiere because I think it made people feel like, okay, these women have the potential to be messy and fun because I think people's biggest concern and my biggest concern, it wasn't necessarily that there was a new cast. It was that are they going to just be like pretty and rich and perfect? It's okay to be pretty and rich. And to, you know, have like an online image. But are you willing to also roll up your sleeves and get dirty? That means sometimes like not always looking perfectly quaffed on camera. That means sometimes having a messy drunk night. That means sometimes, you know, getting into a fight or having things happen that you didn't plan on happening. Like the real stuff. So I just want to know that they're willing and able. And I think that they are. So I think it's good. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm going to give it a fair chance. And I'm also still watching Crappy Lake, which I'm also really enjoying. I know it's not having like the highest ratings and people are like, like people who are OG Roni kind of haters are like, oh, this just proves that the OGs wouldn't bring ratings. And I don't, I don't agree with that because This is just a smaller type of show. It's like a half hour light comedy. It's what it's supposed to be. I don't think it was ever going to be the thing that was going to bring in a million viewers or anything like that. It's fun. Their ratings have gone up the second episode uh, quite a bit. And they're honestly like, it is a feel good story. Like Luann and Sonia actually are trying to help this town. And there actually is like a heartfelt kind of part to it. And... The first episode, of course, two episodes were hilarious. And it also has, like I said, like the kind of heartwarming aspect. So, and you get a little taste of the OGs. Like, I think it kind of, it plays, we have like a nice buffet for everyone. We have the new Roni, we have that, we have the ultimate girls trip coming. You know, we're fed and I'm happy about that. Um, One thing, I do need to go back to Beverly Hills right now. Because I just realized that I forgot something really important in Beverly Hills News that I need to talk about, which is that Erica Jane uh, supposedly, well, not supposedly, she did, met up with victims of Tom Girardi's. So, yeah, this is a pretty big deal, right? So, really, she went to an event and it was... So I guess it was like former Girardi Keys clients in Sherman Oaks. And the quote from Erica is anyone who has been wronged, I want to, them to be made whole. And she meets and has like, you know, like a luncheon or something with the victims. So the Talk of Shame posted this and I'm just going to read the caption. It says an amazing day for unity and doing good. RHOBH star Erica Jane came to the launch of Paul's Ice Cream Company and met with some of the Girardi Keys victims. Apologies were made. Doesn't say from who. I just want to point that out. And focus for everyone seems to be less about finger pointing and more about how to help each other rebuild. Thank you, Kimberly Archie, for organizing an amazing event. And thank you, Valley and Restaurant, for hosting. And everyone go support this amazing ice cream company. Okay. Now, I mean, this is very surprising for a few reasons. Firstly, this is an admission of guilt in a way. It's not, but it is. It's not in the sense that I know what Eric is going to say already. She's going to say... I'm not guilty. I didn't know anything about it. I'm a victim too, just like these women. However, since I am a celebrity in the public eye, I have more privilege than them in that she's, you know, wealthy. Like, yes, she's poor in, it's all relative, right? Like she's poor maybe in relation to like Sutton (laughs) and Kyle, but She's compared to these people, she is privileged, right? And she has more money. So, yeah, 
she's kind of, oh, I'm using my platform to do good, right? So there's a way for her to twist this, okay? However, on the other side, it goes against everything that she's been saying for the last few years, which is that she can't admit that there are victims. She can't admit any of this because it could get her in a sticky legal situation. Now, maybe things have happened with the lawsuits and court that, you know, make her feel like she's in a safe enough place legally that she can now do this. I don't know. I'm assuming we might get some updates on the new season. I hope that we would. And it's just a very unexpected move. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Did she get hit in the head and she woke up and was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do this today and like, you know, rehab my image, which she should have done a long time ago. But I mean, it's just it's so opposite of everything that she's been doing, saying, acting like people have not just been offended by the accusations. People have been annoyed by the way she acted after them. Just, you know, people just wanted her to show some sympathy and she wouldn't even acknowledge that victims existed. Like she was the one who said there we don't even know if there are victims. I mean, clearly she has changed her mind about that. So, okay. I'm also surprised at these victims' willingness to meet with her. I don't know, you know, maybe they feel that this is a stepping stone towards them getting some kind of settlement or something. I'm not saying directly from Erica, but just in general. Maybe they feel like, maybe they believe that she really didn't know about, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I guess we're going to see. But I would say that this is one of the most surprising pieces of Bravo news in a while. Uh, for me, at least. This was not on my bingo card. At all. Like, at all. <laughs> so, I will be interested to see kind of where things go with that. Um, so, I don't know. I hope that, you know, she stays on the right track and tries to help these people. And... Which does also, one last thing that does kind of make me doubt her staying power on the show. I think the reason that she has had lasting power the last few seasons is because she's been willing to lean into the victim role. If she's no longer willing to do that, and she's going to make this like healing with the victims thing kind of her new angle, that's only going to last for so long. And then people are just going to get bored of it. And I don't think she'll have lasting power on the show. She might have like a couple more seasons left, like the one that's coming and maybe one more after that. But then she might be done. Because like, you know, a lot of what was interesting about her before, I mean, I didn't find it interesting, but other people did was like, you know, her, the flash, it's expensive to be me, the private planes, the spending 40000 a month on glam and like all that's kind of gone. And what are you left with? She's just kind of like miserable and like not that fun or dynamic and boring, in my opinion. Besides her personal drama, which we know she's only willing to share so much of. Right. And now that's kind of fizzling. So I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. So. That is all for this week. So I just want to thank you all for, number one, dealing with me being late with this podcast today. <laughs> and number two, I want to thank you all for listening to the podcast, supporting the podcast. Please rate, review, subscribe, share it to your Instagram, tag me, all that good stuff. Uh, for more information about um, the sponsors or advertisers, please check the show notes. I will always link and tag everything. And now you are in the know for everything Bravo, and I will see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Bravo and Botox. And if you'd like to support me and the show, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. You can also visit buymeacoffee.com slash bravo and Botox to send your love through some much needed caffeine. Until next time at our next Bravo paper. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>